What's going on guys? Welcome to your fifth Unity tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to get into some scripting or some coding, programming, whatever lingo you want to use that's what we're going to do because obviously within a game you want to have some interaction you want you know our ball not just to drop like this you know that's not much of a game so what we're going to do is we're going to create a script for our player or for our, our sphere that we set up that's going to move it to the right at a consistent velocity um, so the things that we have to take into consideration is the right direction would be our x axis to the right will be a positive x velocity to the left will be a negative x velocity um, so we're just gonna jump right into it uh, again if you guys are new programmers hopefully you'll kinda understand the concepts but if you don't go on to mybringback.com we have a lot of free tutorials for like learning Java programming and uh, you know they'll be beneficial to you even though we're gonna be programming in a different language called JavaScript it's pretty similar um, and you'll get the basic concepts but I have a feeling you guys probably won't even need to do that because we're gonna just write some simple programs in this tutorial but if you ever get confused you know check out our other tutorials on our website but let's jump into it uh, the first thing that we want to do is create a script so we're just gonna create our player and uh, you know work on that for now work add some functionality to our ball besides just gravity so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the project tab here right click on our scripts go to create and we're gonna say create a new Java script now this script is gonna be specifically designed for a player object or a sphere so we're gonna label it as player so it's nice to have that organization going so just off click and in our inspector we see some basic setup over here um, we're actually going to open up Mono Developer. How you do that is just double click on your script itself or in your inspector you can hit the open button. So I'm just going to you know, double click. Might take a few seconds for you guys and it will open up this uh, IDE or our development platform that we are going to start coding in. As you can see there's already two methods set up within this script. And these two functions are functions that Unity calls when we hit the run button or when we actually run our game now the start would be the first method that's called it's only called once so we might want to set up some initialization variables we might want to set up some you know basic functions of our player within the start method so that's what the start method will do the update method is going to be called over and over and over and over uh, we're just going to make different adjustments throughout the update method because it's within our game loop or game thread so it's just gonna keep consistently calling this update method and any changes to our player will be executed throughout this method now we can also create different functions or different methods both mean the exact same thing so for example we're eventually gonna create a jump method and you know it's a basic setup like that now unity is not gonna call this jump method because unity didn't develop this method uh, this is a method we came up with and obviously it does nothing right now so before we actually get into the coding I'm gonna go back to unity click on our uh, on our player object and over here we added the component rigid body now we have these things like mass drag angular uh, drag uses gravity kinetic energy all this stuff but we are not limited just to these aspects that we see in the in the GUI or the graphic user interface for unity we also have all of these other aspects attached to our player just by adding this rigid body component the thing I want to emphasize is we are making this script specifically for a player object so we can relate to the player object that we are creating the skip script for and we know that's a rigid body so we can use we can access some additional information besides just the stuff that we do in the GUI over here so we're just gonna jump back into mono develop and go into our start method and we're gonna define you know the starting velocity of our ball again we want the ball to move to the right so that is the X axis and we're gonna define the X velocity of our ball and how we do that is we refer to the rigid body and this help menu should come up but if it doesn't uh, you can hit control space and it will pop up this help menu for you and then just hit down and we're gonna go to this rigid body here enter 
Now what this does is it, it accesses all of the information that a rigid body type object has. We're going to get a little bit more specific so we do that by hitting a period and we have these other things like add force, add torque, um, but again we're working with velocity so we're just going to say we want to access the velocity. Um, so again all lowercase type out velocity or use your helper and then we want to get even more specific because we can have the overall velocity of the object or we can have the velocity in the x and the y or the z direction so we're going to hit our period again and hit x direction and now we're going to set this velocity to be something like 15. Uh, now the unit size you guys might be like okay what does 15 mean is that 15 miles per hour 15 you know meters per hour what does it mean it's just a, a unit that unity uses don't worry about it for now we're just going to set it at 15. Um, we'll get into the specifics later but uh, now let's save this script and go back into Unity and hit run. Pretty boring, right? Well, the thing that happened is we haven't attached our script to our actual player object yet. So we're going to go back and stop our game from running. And then what we're going to do is click on our player object. And uh, we're going to drag this script over to our player object within the inspector, just like we did with rigid body before. So we drag that over. Now, let's run it again, see what happens. As you can see, our ball has a nice velocity. Let's expand our uh, platform, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to make this look somewhat decent and scroll out. So since this is the introduction to scripting, we're gonna get a little bit more specific. Let's say we wanna shoot off our ball and then we wanna have it you know, change direction. So we wanna change the velocity over time to the negative, um, okay? so. What I mean by that is, again, we have this start method. It's going to shoot our ball off to the right. And then we have this update method that gets called over and over and over again. So again, we can refer to the rigid body of the object that this script is uh, designed for. So again, it's our player object. And then we can say velocity, uh, you know, dot x. And we could set it to be like negative 15, something like that. But what's going to happen is our start method is going to get called. It's going to shoot our ball off to the right for like a millisecond. And then it's going to call this update method. Um, and then it's going to be like, oh, oh, the, the, the velocity is supposed to be in the negative direction. So it's going to shoot our ball off to the left. That's not exactly what we want. We want kind of a smooth transaction. So what we want to do is we want to make small increments to the velocity in the x direction over time. How we do that is a simple minus sign before our equal sign here. And let's just change this to be like 0 0.01. Eh, that's probably too small. We'll just do 0 0.1 uh, for now. We're going to save this. And what this is doing is it's saying, hey, whatever the current velocity is, subtract 0.1 from that each time we call this update method. Again, our update method gets called over and over and over again. So it's eventually going to be in the negative direction. The first time this update method gets called, it's going to be 15. And then we're going to subtract 0.1 from 15. And that's what the velocity is going to be equal to now. So it's going to be 14.9. Next time it calls this, it's going to be 14.8. And then eventually we're going to get in the negative direction. So let's just run this application. And as you can see here, it kind of slows down. Then it starts going back in the negative direction. So that's the that's the benefit of of the update method because we have access, and the ball will be uh, looks like it's getting faster and faster. We have access to consistently updating uh, whatever we want within that update method. That's that's why it's called update. So uh, that's pretty cool. Let's say we want to have the ball stop once it gets to a velocity of zero. We're just going to create a simple if statement. And if you guys have programmed before, you probably know what this is. But just for example's sake, again, since we're just getting into the programming aspect, I'm going to say bot rigid body dot velocity dot x. If that is greater than zero, and then we're going to enter parentheses, add another bracket finish off a bracket here and uh, we're going to subtract one from or point one from the velocity only if the velocity is positive so only if the velocity is going to the right and we can also throw in an else clause else and we're going to add a bracket here uh, we're going to set up our rigid body to or the velocity of the extraction I should say to be just zero 
Most likely this else statement won't be called, but just in case if we subtract it a little bit too much within this statement, it's going to you know, reset the velocity to be zero. Oops, I added an extra bracket there. Um, so let's save this, run it, and I'm sorry for that noise in the background, uh, but as you can see here, a ball shoots off to the right and just comes to a stop. So that's the introduction of scripting. We'll get into some more complex stuff as we go. But thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.